A wall in your room is 5.6 meters by 3.2 meters. A small can of paint will cover about 20 square meters. Do you have enough paint to paint your wall? Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about multiplying decimals. All right, so let's talk about that wall. Uh, it was 5.6 meters by 3.2 meters. So if you think, drawing a picture, you know, this is going to be about 5.6 meters by 3.2 meters. And we want to know if we're going to have enough paint, so what we need to find is the area. That's what we're covering with the paint. So to do that, we're just going to multiply, right? Length times width. Uh, so 5.6 times 3.2. 5.6 times 3.2. Now, if we were going to estimate this, that would be about 6. That would be about 3. 6 times 3 is about 18. So hopefully... If, if our estimation is somewhere accurate, uh, we should have enough. So let's see. Let's just multiply. 6 times 2 is 12. 10 plus 1 is 11. Carry the 0. Uh, 18. Another 1. 15 plus 1 is 16. 2, 9, 7, 1. Now, if you're thinking, well, where this is decimals, right? Where's my decimal point going to go? You think it should be close to 18? Decimal point goes there, 17.92. Don't forget your units. It was meters times meters, so that becomes meters squared, which makes sense for area. So 17.92 meters squared. The small can of paint could cover 20 meters squared or 20 square meters. So do we have enough? And the answer is yes. Okay, so let's try another example. All right, here's example one, six times 3.91. Now, when you're dealing with decimals, it's always a good uh, idea to estimate. And the reason is because it can be very easy to put the decimal point in the wrong spot, which completely changes your answer. Uh, so if you estimate, that will help kind of catch those errors. So if we're going to estimate, this would be... The six is okay. 3.91, we can just round up to 4. So we're thinking our product should be around 24. So let's see. Now, when you're multiplying with decimals, the trick is to treat it like the decimal isn't there. Set up the problem like you would a normal uh, multiplication problem. So what I'm saying is, don't think of this as 3.91. Imagine it's just 391 times 6. Well, if it was that, you would put the 391 on top, multiply it by 6. That's how you would set it up, right? Um, and we can do that because order doesn't matter with multiplication because of the commutative property. So we can do that. Once you set it up like that, then go ahead and put the decimal point back in. Just don't forget that. And now we just multiply like normal. Um, that's going to be 6. 6 times 9 is 54. Carry the 5. 6 times 3 is 18. Plus 5 is 23. Now, this is the last step, and it's really important. Where does the decimal point go in our answer? And all you have to do is look at how many places you have after the decimal points in your problem. So here we've got the 9 and the 1, two places after the decimal in 3.91, so that's 2. 6 doesn't have any, right? The decimal point, if we wanted, would be here. There's nothing over there, so that's going to be 0. So in our answer, we need two decimal places. Okay. So... One, two, the decimal point goes there, and that is our product, that's our answer. 
23.46. And let's check, does that make sense with our estimate? Yeah, it's really, really close. So we know we're good. Okay, let's try another one, another example. All right, here's example number two. 1.35 times 100. Um, when you're multiplying by powers of 10, uh, like 100 is, it's 10 times 10, right? Uh, or 10 squared. There's a really nice shortcut that you can make. If you remember, our whole number system is base 10. It's based on powers of 10. So if you think, well, take it simpler. Well, what's 2 times 10? Well, that's just 20. 2 times 100. That's 200. 2 times 1,000. Well, that's 2,000. Okay. Um, that's very simple because it's just a whole number. All you do is add zeros at the end, right? You do the 1 times the 2 and then add however many zeros you have. Uh, but you can also think of it, well, if there was a decimal here, where would it be? Well, with whole numbers, we can put a decimal right after. And now from here to here, what happened to the decimal? It went from here over one and you just filled in a zero. Here it was times a hundred, so we're moving it twice, right? It filled in those zeros. Here times a thousand, you're moving the decimal point three times. When you're multiplying by powers of 10, you're moving the decimal point to the right. And you just got to think, well, how many powers of 10? 10, you're moving it once. Right? 10 is the same as 10 to the first power. 100 is 10 squared, so you're moving it twice. 1,000 is 10 cubed, you're moving it three times. You can also think, how many zeros are there? That's how many times you're moving it. So, with that in mind, this problem becomes much, much easier. I'm multiplying by a power of 10. I'm going to move it to the right because I'm multiplying. And there's two zeros, or I can think of that as 10 squared to the power of 2. So I'm going to move it once, twice. So that becomes 135. Okay. Very simple. Here's something to try on your own. All right, here's our last example, 3.1 times 0 0.05. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said when you're multiplying with decimals, pretend the decimal points aren't there and set up the problem like that. So I'm not going to think of this as 3.1. I'm going to think of it as 31 times 0 0.05. Um, now, there's a couple ways I could put the 31 on top or I could put the 005 on top. Um, me personally, I like to do whichever ones have the most digits, I like to put that on top. But it doesn't matter, you can do it either way you want. So I'm gonna set this up as 005 times 31. Okay. Pretend the decimal points aren't there and set it up that way. Now that I've set it up, I'm gonna put them back so I don't forget, decimal point is there. Decimal point is there. Now, you'll notice these decimal points aren't lined up. And that is the main difference between adding and subtracting decimals, where the decimal points have to be lined up, and multiplying with decimals, where they don't. Okay. That's the main thing to remember. So you should write that down. When you're multiplying with decimals, the decimal points do not have to be lined up. So that's how we're setting it up. And now I just multiply. 1 times 5 is 5. That's going to be 0, 0. Add a 0. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. That's 0. Plus 1 is 1. 0. Add them up. I get 5, 5, 1, 0. Now, the last step is to count my decimal places. This here, 0 0.05. Five has two, that has one, add them together. My answer should have three decimal places. So one, two, three. My, my decimal point goes right there. And that is my answer. Now, if I want to check, if I want to estimate, well, if I'm going to estimate, that would be round of three. 
times, that's very close to zero. So three times zero is zero. Is my answer pretty close to zero? Yeah, it is. So that's the last example. Again, remember, when you're multiplying decimals, do not line them up. Sometimes they will line up just, you know, because they have the same decimal places, but they don't need to be. Okay, so that's the main difference. Here's some more to try on your own. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you like this video, please subscribe.